am really pleased you can be with us today, Jose. Uh, for those who do not know, Jose Saldana is the director of the New York-based organization RAP. That's a campaign to release aging people in prison. Uh, Jose was himself incarcerated for years, as I understand it, decades, and is now at the forefront of a massive campaign to push the state of New York, Governor Cuomo and others, to release and especially those most vulnerable to COVID-19 in, in the state's jails and prisons. Jose, thank you for joining us. Can you talk you. about uh, the rap campaign? Uh, what are you calling for right now and why? Who is it that's in prison in New York? And what can we, what can and should be done right now as we sit here in this COVID crisis? Well, first, let me, let, me, let me just give a little background that RAP was created to, to address a crisis that was created actually by mass incarceration. People were getting longer sentences with little opportunity for release. This created the crisis of people getting old, sick, and dying in prison. In the last nine or 10 years, 675 elder people have died in New York State prisons. And I say elder, I mean 50 and over, 675. And the average age of death is an alarming 58 years old. So in New York, the elder people and, and just about every other incarcerated person has faced a health crisis for years and decades. And now comes a deadly crisis that is fatal to those who are elderly and, and have underlying health conditions. So as the only humanitarian Please solution. At all. Please. Please. Take it out of the room. Am I OK? Yeah, keep going, Jose. Okay. Sorry. Interrupt OK, as, as the only humanitarian solution to this humanitarian crisis, of people dying in prison, RAP is demanding uh, 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 clemency. We have collaborated with the Parole Prep Project and prepared a clemency demand that calls for mass clemencies. All those who are elderly and have underlying health conditions should be granted immediate clemencies. And this mass clemency should be prioritized from the elderly, those who are languishing in radical regional units in New York State prisons, the 80 years old or so, dementia, cognitive impairments, as well as those who are in their 70s down to their 60s, to prioritize by age and the health condition to decarcerate. Because these men and women have already languished in prison for three and four decades. So they should have the opportunity to come home rather than die in prison. They will be the first to die if they're infected. And then we are also calling for the New York State to maximize parole releases. And by that, we mean that every single person that is parole eligible has been repeatedly denied parole by a punitive-minded parole board that they should be automatically, summarily granted parole so they could be immediately released to their families and home communities before they get sick. And all those who have parole hearings coming up in the, le in the next year or so, year and a half, two years, to expedite this hearing so that they will have the opportunity to be released on parole. So this is just a humane and a moderate approach to decarcerating, getting the most vulnerable people out of prison so that they will not die. If Governor Cuomo and his New York State Parole Board fails to act in this manner, New York State prisons will be transformed into death camps and the deaths and dying will be on his hands. Thank you, Jose, for that powerful account. Uh, Jose, um, what can you give us a report on how the organizing is going? I, I understand there have been uh, some releases from New York state jails and prisons. In fact, in a moment after we get Rashid back, we will bring in Aziz Coleman, who has who's in fact been released from Rikers. Can you give us an assessment of what actions have been taken, what successes the RAP campaign has, have, has had, and what obstacles uh, you all and we all are continuing to hit? and how we can overcome those obstacles right now in terms of the actual campaign. 
Well, the releases have been minimal and they have been only related to the jails. The jails where you have people who have been reincarcerated for ridiculous parole violations, people who should not be in prison in the first place, people who the bail reforms that were enacted uh, just a couple of months ago were rolled back. So now we have more incarcerated people for low level offenses that they should not be in prison in the first place. And we're talking about the real, the lowest level of offenses, you know, and, and this is not a joke. People may look at it as, as comical, but there is a crime as walking while black in New York state, as well as others. And people are just being picked up based on who they are and what clothes they wear and, and incarcerated. So these are the ones that are, have been released and not all of them, all of them, exactly all, everyone in New York County jails should be released rather than face death by incarceration. They have not been convicted of any crime, but rap focused mostly on the elderly who have already languished in prison for decades. We have not had any success. Governor Cuomo is not addressing this issue. We keep, we keep on organizing and campaigning against him, denouncing him at every opportunity until he begins this process of mass releases in the New York State prison system. The prisons are, are a, a breeding grounds for this virus. Already we have 80 some incarcerated men and women that been tested positive. And the only reason why they give us that number because they're not testing anybody. And we have 400 and some correction officers who've been tested positive. And ironically, they suspended all visits from 52 prisons in New York State, suspended them as a first and only option of preventive measures. And, and, and now it's the officers who have three shifts of officers going in and out of prison. And they're the ones that are infesting our, 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 our comrades in, in prison. It's not the family because by doing what he did, he actually targeted the pe pe people of color, our communities of color. He targeted them as if they were ones responsible for bringing in this virus into the prison when it's their correction officers that are bringing it into the prison.